Yeah. And now for our weekly news segment. It's to be changed. That needs to be like Tony. Like it needs to be like a mini We're clip of Tony in the news. Yes. Tony, we, we need to make that. We need to make All it right, good. We got 10%. Stop. Hold on. Go, I, gotta Tony. Get, I gotta get this thought out. We need to make a good oh news God. intro with you, Tony and the news. Yes, we will. Yeah. Yeah, and me getting beaten by people that don't have the same beliefs. <laughs> <laughs> and the news right, section. Go. Okay, go. okay, okay. Okay. <laughs> um dire screen. Okay, it's good. Okay, go. hey guys. Uh let's get into it. So it's gonna be <laughs> faster than usual, but um yeah. So for the first thing, President Biden said that Elon Musk bought an outfit that spews lies all across the world. Now, of course, he's not known for spewing lies, uh, spewing lies, sorry. And, um, you know, he's known for crashing bikes and the economy, and he's all out of bikes. So he's going to focus on the economy more. And, um, yeah, it's just, what? Like, why, (laughs) why would he say that? Especially because he himself is lying so much about inflation numbers and all these things like as we know um so it's just interesting that he said that but moving on and uh, talking about elon musk he's going to charge eight dollars for um uh, the verification badge that he have on uh on twitter which some people agree with some people don't i'm not sure if it's going to fix all the problems that we have um some people claim that Twitter wouldn't verify them, but then if they talked to some people from the inside and paid like uh, $15,000, then they would get verified. Uh, and there's some big names names that said that. So uh, I'm not sure what's if it's going to fix the situation, what's going to happen. Um, but it's it's uh, interesting and it got a lot of attention. And it went down for 20, from $20 to, to 8 So it's not that bad. And it's going to be adjusted to, you know, um, people's location and where they live. So it's so it's uh, accommodating to their economy because for some people, eight dollars is too much. Tony, can can you hear me? Because I just almost accidentally unplugged everything. Um, yeah, I can. I can. Okay, good. Can you, yeah. Can you hear me? It's good. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we good, we good, we good. Yeah, but the uh, the validate. It's a, I don't even understand that, man. I don't understand the asking people to pay eight dollars when anybody can just verify themselves now with eight bucks. Like it doesn't solve the problem, right? And and now you have you seen some of the people that have already like used their blue check mark to change their name to Elon Musk and tweet? Out? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Uh, and Donald Trump and yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, I've seen a lot. I have a blue check mark account. I'm like the only idiot who has a blue check mark account. I don't use it from when I ran for election. Yeah, I've seen my other account. Like, what am I doing? I didn't know it was that rare. I don't even get the like. It it should just be based on you know like amount of followers you have, and you can kind of tell if it's the real person or not. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it it, it kind of sorts mm-hmm. itself out. The eight dollars, it just. It's, mm-hmm. it, it seems like uh, it seems like Elon is just trying to tank Twitter. <laughs> like he's like pissed off that he got stuck <laughs> with it, and he's just like ra- he's just like raging out. He's like fuck all of you, <laughs> and he's just messing with it. I think he'll come back around and then he'll they'll fix it all up. But I think he's literally just having a moment right now. Is is kind of my take on the situation. <laughs> it could be, but it's he's having fun at least. You know, some fun Twitter. He, he changed his description to Twitter complaint hotline operator. <laughs> the eight bucks a month is worth it for Elon Musk entertainment, to be honest. The guy is highly entertaining, I think. Oh, for oh, sure. I, I feel like people are getting a little, a little sick of his, uh, his shtick, though. Okay, we're at 7%. All right, go ahead. Okay, 7% go ahead. moving on. Uh, <laughs> then I, I guess um, we should go over the text-based news, and then we'll go back to the videos if we have time. Yeah, for those that are listening, all the the links are in the description. So you know, if the stream dies, go down, Tony, go. Go. Okay, okay, okay. But I, I have to play this later. Like it's really good. Um, but Turkey is closing in on two hundred percent inflation. Uh, the president Erdogan gives his people always more reasons to opt for Bitcoin, according to Sylvain Sarel. Uh, but essentially, authorities speak of uh, an inflation level to eighty five percent. But it's obviously way and beyond that. It's more close to two hundred percent, and uh, they're obviously lying about about the metrics, like they are here as well. There's no way that is the level that they're talking about. 
eight, which is eight percent or whatever. Um, but yeah, the food prices went up. Um, everything went up, and the Turkish lira is on a huge decline since two thousand and nineteen, I believe. And then this article goes into into more detail. Um, but now let's move on. Let's keep it going. Uh, they want to declare a pandemic amnesty. We need to forgive one another for what we did and said when we were in the dark about COVID. Now they shut down your business. They shut down schools. They've done all the things. They wouldn't let you see your family members when they were in the hospital dying. They wouldn't let you do a lot of things, but now they want to declare amnesty. They want you to forget everything that happened. Like, you know, like kids, for example, like this kid specifically, um, it's a kid, they can't stand still. And obviously, you know, they'll get nosebleed from the nasal swabs from COVID and things like that. But I mean, this is the least thing that would would, would happen. There's way worse um, um, occurrences from, from the pandemic. But yeah, there's not going to be any amnesty. We're, we will not forget. We will not forgive. And we are going to use Monero because it goes against this amnesty that they're talking about. And yeah, we could talk I mean... about this for a long time. I got the power up and running, so we can talk about it for a long time. Yeah, we're we're back in action. Oh, Tony. you do? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. I don't know. I don't know about okay. Sunita's power okay. though, so so we won't go too long. Um, but yeah, the okay. amnesty thing. Obviously, forgive, right? We we got to forgive, right? It's the only way we mm-hmm. move forward. We forgive people, um, but we we don't let them forget, you know, what they mm-hmm. did, and and they need to they need to admit that it was wrong. You know, they need to come to terms on their end uh, and start more people Oops. need to start admitting that they were on the side of tyranny, which is a hard, a hard thing to hard pill to swallow. Um, but yeah, so if that's what they mean by that, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm all fine with forgiving as long as people started admitting that they that they were wrong and they were on the wrong side. Yeah, well, I don't think that's going to happen because um <laughs> They're, they won't admit their own lies. They, it's always the other person. So, it's happening. People are realizing. People are realizing. It's just you know, it's it's the human nature. It's human condition, right? So people need to uh-huh. come to it on their own terms. Mm-hmm. It's just it's like trying to convince a BTC maxi, you know, mm-hmm. that Bitcoin is in private, right? Some, some you, you could yell at them all day. You can show them the facts. You can show them everything. But it, it at the end of the day, people need to come to it on their own terms and. I do, I do think that's that's starting to happen, which is a good thing. I mean, like I said, look at here in New York, they're about to elect a Republican governor in a state that has two hundred million more Democrats. Uh, that's that's in nice. case that people are, are people's hearts and minds are 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 changing, which is mm-hmm. urging to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Beautifully, beautifully said. Um, but then let, let's talk about talking about politicians and things like that let's actually play this video we have played it last time and it's about uh rishi and the cbdc but this one is two minutes long and we'll play the whole thing because it's really worth it in this specific um video we have um russell brand and his take on it and it's really entertaining plus i mean he's very aware of a lot of things um so let's uh let's watch it oh did i check the um, the audio Oh, let, let, let's let's try it first. Can you guys hear anything? Nope, nothing. Okay, so let's go back. One sec. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Share screen. Share audio. There we go. Um. Okay. Awesome. Sh- should work now. Okay, so let's watch uh, this video bank digital currencies, CBDCs. Central bank digital currencies could be a digital version of money, a bit like a digital banknote. <laughs> I like it, because we've got a broad concept. Uh, hmm, what if this person's an idiot? Which we think that they are. It's like a digital penny for your digital money box, for your digital shithole that you live in. <laughs> you will owe nothing. You will be happy. 
that could be used alongside <laughs> physical notes and coins. For now, till we phase them out, if you start any little trucker protests, oh, where's my money gone? The digital piggy bank is broken, I'm afraid. Start being a bit more cooperative. Unlike most of the digital money people use daily today, it would be issued directly by a central bank, like the Bank of England in the UK. That's good, a central bank. Nothing wrong with centralised authority, centralised power, globalist decrees coming down from on high, avoiding democracy. That's exactly what we want. Keep talking. And governments and central banks across the world are working together. Oh, really? They're working together? Well, that's just <laughs> such great news. The IMF, the World Bank. Why don't we involve the WEF and the WHO? <laughs> what we need are unelected global bodies that have been able to co-opt political power, respond to financial power, and ignore and oppress ordinary people. Whether it's the recent medical emergency or the cost of living crisis, we're seeing the benefits all around us. I can't wait for your next policy. You're going to take our money now. This is great. Looking into what having a digital currency might mean in practice. I think I know what it means in practice. More power for you, no power for us. This includes <laughs> issues that people care about, such as ensuring users' money would be safe and secure, that it could work with other ways to pay, would be energy efficient. Oh, it's got to be energy efficient. I was about to say, is it energy efficient? Is it energy efficient? <laughs> I've got to make sure. Oh, a few other questions. You wouldn't use this ever, would you, to implement control or to advance social credit type systems or to <laughs> shut down the bank accounts of people you disagree with or to surveil people and have a surveillance network that you've developed in conjunction with big tech and now a financial arm that you're developing so that you can lock step together and gridlock us in a digital prison of surveillance. <laughs> That's just, just off the top of my head. <laughs> That was the whole video. <laughs> that guy is a freaking genius, man. He's such a good, I love him. He's such a good communicator. And mm -hmm. his, 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 I love his brain, man. I love the way that guy's brain works. I love him. He's so funny. He, and he was, he's so aware of what's going on. And he was so on point. So I was so happy when I saw this video and I said, we have to play it. Uh, I'm lighting this up in, in honor of him. I can't see. Oh, okay. I can hear what. Okay. Did you get it from the Coconuts guy cousin or? <laughs> no, I got this in New York today. I know, I know, yeah. I know. The Coconuts okay. guy. <laughs> that was last time. That was last time. No, he's he's down in Miami. I know, I know. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he, yeah, so he's he's super super interesting. But uh, let's talk about um, David Ike. I've been listening to David Ike for a long time, and I don't believe in all the things that he says. So let's talk about reptilians and some other stuff. Um, but he's now deemed a level three terrorist. He hasn't killed anybody. He hasn't done anything, but just speak up his mind, which you could shut off, right? Um, but he's been saying a lot of things about COVID before it happened, and then all, the, all those things did happen. And now he's talking about Netherlands. But I'm pretty sure, even if you do want to have him for Monerotopia, which I think he would be really incredible we couldn't because he's pretty much i mean prohibited from going to any country <laughs> i don't know about much about this what, what's going on what what happened what do you do i mean he i'll, I'll play this video but he he's, he's been talking about the government for a long time like decades and just exposing what they do and it's it seems like whatever he's been saying is starting to be true he's been talking about you know those uh, credit system social credit systems mm -hmm. and you know, the vaccines and all these things. And um, I was listening to him be before COVID and he would explain what is going to happen. And exactly that happened. And um, yeah, let's play this video. It's just one minute. So it's really interesting. As the Dutch government, a guy called Rutter, the prime minister, completely owned by the World Economic Forum and uh, Klaus Schwab, why has he just announced that the Netherlands the second biggest exporter of food in the world is targeting farmers to destroy them and get them off the land, which is where all these farming protests in the Netherlands have come from. At a time of food shortages and supply chain problems, you are targeting the second biggest exporter of food in the bloody world to destroy its farming base. Why are you doing that? If people depend on you for what's left of the food, 
you control them. Where food is abundant and cheap, you do not control them. Where energy is cheap and abundant, you do not control them. Scarcity equals dependency equals control. And that's why they're targeting the food chain, they're targeting the energy supply, they're targeting everything. There we go. Um, it's hard to uh, argue with that. Yeah, you can't say anything. I mean, who knows? Maybe one day it's going to be so bad that gratuitous is going to be the second largest distributor of food <laughs> around the world. Dude, I, for I, I, dream about, I dream about it all the time. <laughs> I'm thinking big with this, but you know, it's. You should. We have should. to. Uh, yeah, yeah. Don't get me started. Yeah, uh, no, it's, it's, it's scary though, man, because these, these aren't, it's yeah, not theoretical. Yeah. We're watching it in real time. We're watching it in real time. We're not mm -hmm. theorizing, oh, they may start to do these things. They're doing them. They're doing them. They're taking actions. They've taken actions and they're taking more. They have. And all this stuff, like all this level of control has been happening before. Like we had communism. Just look at that. Read some history books, you know. For right. wasn't that people. long. Really, was not that long ago at all. Was not. That it long wasn't ago. like we yeah. had. Uh, I'm gonna look it up real quick. Um, first in Romanian, Romanian, and then I'll translate. Uh, I mean, we obviously still have it now, right? In in certain parts of the world, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, Eastern Eastern Europe, you know, Poland, man. Yeah, like, Poland was 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 hardcore communist. I mean, yeah. it wasn't that long ago. It wasn't, and so were we. Like this, this little paper. This is a non-digital form of CBDC. What is it asking for? So this used to be a ticket for bread. Oh shit! It asks for your name, last name, where you live, your ID number, um, the name of the place that you got the bread from, um, how much bread did you get, how many grams did you get, and your signature. And you will go every day. And you'll be assigned only so much. It asks for everything. So we've had CBDC. <laughs> we have we've had CBDCs before. <laughs> Ta time is of the essence. We got the circular economy uh, is going to start to grow out of out of real need. It's it's mm -hmm. happening. It is happening, but it's not happening with Cash App, <laughs> is it? Um, oh because they're censoring Bitcoin transactions to wallets of. Cuban residents due to sanctions, is a, a user reports, uh, not your keys, not your coins. And I think someone wrote down that it's happening in Iran as well, which I think it is. Um, but so you could have Bitcoin, but if it's in such an app, in a centralized app like Cash App, it doesn't matter. It's literally as if you had dollars. Right. Yeah, it's it's like you're using a Venmo account at that point. Exactly. Yeah. Like no, maybe... but I mean, so, so that's I mean, this is no surprise though, right? All these guys are going to be doing this. It's just, it's just a wake up call that people need to realize that they need to, you know, use pure, pure, pure wallets. You know, I mean, that mm -hmm. that information needs to get out there. Mm -hmm. And the wallets are convenient enough now where it doesn't make, you know, you sh why not use Monero.com wallet or Cake wallet? Like to, the jump <laughs> between that and Venmo is so small. When I went and I made th this purchase today, um, like I said, the guy, I had already set him up with Monero.com wallet like two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I made a purchase then. And when I walked in today, he recognized me right away. And uh, he, he, he put out his wallet and he, want, he wanted the Monero. He wanted the Monero. And he's like, hey, man, he's like, it worked. I was like, what worked? He's like, it worked. He's like, I was able to buy, you know, buy a gift card with it. And I went to, uh, I think he said he went to Applebee's and he like feasted. I was like, oh, man. I was like, that's awesome. I'm like, but you should also, you know, save some. I'm like, it's, uh, you know, learn about Monero. I'm like, I love that you're using it, though. That's amazing. Like, that was that was amazing that he did that. And then I sent, I sent him, you know, whatever it was, you know, another couple of bucks for my purchase today. And uh, I reiterated the fact that the most amazing part is when I send you this, this Monero, nobody knows, man. It's not Venmo, mm -hmm. not Venmo. And like, I, I see, you see the eyes like click, like it is cash, man. Um, so it's we're we're right there so it's mm -hmm. let let the cash apps please please keep doing more of this right please keep doing more of this 
So people wake the fuck up and they are, you know, they move over to something like like a Monero.com that might be slightly less convenient, but really not anymore. Uh, and you're gonna get, you know, liberty alongside it. So I think I think mm -hmm. that's good news. That's bullish news for for Monero. As that always. is bullish. Anything that is bad is bullish for Monero, unfortunately. <laughs> if you, yeah. you know, um, but also like you can also say, hey, do you know that if if you get over six hundred dollars in cash app, you need to pay taxes? No, that's that's what I told the guy today. I'm like, it's like I'm like, you know, Venmo sends you a or Venmo, yeah, tax form at the end of the year. Yeah, yeah. So with Monero, doesn't have to be that way. But yeah, let's talk about. Um, Let's talk about compliance since we just talked about it um and let's talk about uh ethereum so ethereum is quite literally an arm's length away from becoming 100 percent owned by ofac and essentially the validators censoring transactions uh, can decide to no longer build on blocks that or will only build on blocks that are ofac compliant right if it's not ofac compliant if it doesn't comply, we don't want it, essentially. And the longest valid chain would no longer be censorship resistant. So Ethereum equals OFAC coin. And if you just look at the numbers, 14% are not OFAC compliant, and then 72% are OFAC compliant. And the merge is not, it's not um, old, you know? I mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's, what I'm, Oh, sorry, what I'm trying to say is that it's it's new, you know? So it's, um, sorry, I got distracted by someone in the comments. Um, it's new, like it just happened. And we're already seeing this, these numbers, these high numbers. So it's going to be more and more OFAC compliant over time. Um, so it's interesting to see. <laughs> I like South Padre, Tony. T tickle the like button. No, I know. That's, that's why I got distracted. I was thinking <laughs> about something and then I actually saw South Padre's... Um, I did hit a like right now. And then that's why like I couldn't think for like two, 10 seconds. Um, Cause give I have the chat to my side. Yeah, give it a like if you like it. If you don't, then don't, I guess. <laughs> but if you do, it helps a lot. So like it. Um, but yeah, so it'd be cool to have someone from the Ethereum community talk about this. Yeah, um, we're, we're working on that. We're trying to get somebody to do a Monero talk on this. Awesome. Like we, like we spoke about last week, right? This is really interesting because um, Ethereum is is changing, and it, it I I think is kind of edging into Bitcoin's uh, you know use case as the number go up coin mm -hmm. because it's even being even more compliant, and you know it's being mm -hmm. it's even more amenable to the powers that be, and. That's part of why Bitcoin is succeeding in the number go up territory, right? They're they're not adding privacy on the protocol level. They're not taking steps that are making it uh, more disruptive, and because of that, it, it helps the number go up, but it, you know, liberty go down. It's like so. Ethereum seems to be taking the same path. Plus, with the you know, my understanding, this you know, obviously you have um, the proof of stake, right? So coins getting locked up with that, and then just with the fact that DeFi is on top of it, I, I'm starting to sound like a Monero, uh, an Ethereum bull. I, I realize as I speak. I mean, if you're if you want to go down that road of number go up, it's like I would think people would start to look more at Ethereum. And then, so then, what is Bitcoin then? All right, well, it's uh, it's censorship resistant. It's digital. Oh, no, no, it's not. It's not, mm -hmm. If you go for that use case, then you're using Monero. So it's like, it's kind of, I, in my opinion, edging into to Bitcoin's territory in terms of what it really is, in terms of the uh, the number go upside, in my, in my opinion. And yeah, maybe we'll see a flipping one day. Who knows? Yeah. Um, I've seen a post, someone posted that um, like 70, 70 percent of the coins of bitcoins haven't moved in six months um and for a true digital cash that's not necessarily a good thing <laughs> there should be a lot of coins moving around you know i mean right. it's not the incentive isn't to use there's no reason uh, to use why why are you gonna go oh like let me go use this thing that i'm hoping <laughs> goes up in value and when i do use it it's worse than using you know a credit card <laughs> potentially in terms of uh, how 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 viewable my track transactions become? Like, there's no there's no <laughs> reason 
to use to transact with Bitcoin. The only reason is, all right, censorship resistant. Like you had, like it's like a, a do or die transaction. And like, why, why would you go that route? And you mm-hmm. just see people, yeah, I don't know. So I, I just don't know where we talked about that in the in the guy I interviewed this week on Monero um, Talk. That was a big part of the show. But yeah, that's that's my theory. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a bit extreme. But uh, I don't own any Ethereum. I remember when Ethereum. Uh, you know the pre the pre launch when they when you could buy you were able to buy I think two thousand Ethereum for one Bitcoin at the time, which was three hundred dollars, and this is when I was like really a BTC maxi and you know I didn't have a lot of money but this is when I was starting to like like accumulate as many Bitcoin as I could you know mm-hmm. I was like no I'm like I'm not gonna spend one of my valuable Bitcoin on that like I would I would never <laughs> and uh, yeah sure enough man they they you know Ethereum. You, you got you got to get you got to give it some credit and like people making the argument that Bitcoin is is more censorship resistant. It's easier to run a node. What we've learned with with Bitcoin and the fact that its number go up, it's like people just start to overlook those things, right? Mm-hmm. And they start to not like the decentralization aspects of it and stuff end up not mattering as much. So. Mm-hmm. I don't know that that's that's my my long term theory, which I think is very bullish for Monero because then that places Monero as the thing that's used for what Bitcoin was meant to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I know you you say sometimes that if Monero hits a thousand dollars, that you know whatever you know whatever you're gonna do a big party <laughs> or something like that. But I think one thousand dollars is really nothing, really nothing. Oh yeah, that's just the beginning. Yeah. That's absolute just, beginning and you know that you know it's a good way to make some money as well of course if you're willing to do that but yeah i mean a thousand dollars is gonna be absolutely nothing but i don't know why because these people are so smart like vitalik is such a smart guy like he made ethereum when he was 19. <laughs> you oh, know like yeah, that guy is he's insane He's, He's a genius, you know. And you know, he was writing about Bitcoin so early in such a detailed way, and so showed so much under. He was explaining Bitcoin to everybody back in the day. That's like that was his original claim to fame. You know, he worked for Bitcoin Magazine, right? He was like one of the reporters. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and then he in- invented Ethereum, man. And uh, you know, it's <laughs> people people couldn't conceive of it potentially working. And it's 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 what is it perfect? No, but it's. What we're learning is, you know, they, these things don't have to truly uh, follow the most ideal thing for them to, for some reason, be, you know, it's, it's serving a different use case, it's serving a different use case. Mm-hmm. It's semi, it's semi uncorruptible. It's not, it's not pure like Monero. That's the Monero thing, but it's mm-hmm. serving a purpose uh, in, in the decisions it's made. And it seems to be edging into to Bitcoin's purpose, in my opinion, in terms of the number go upside. I think so as well, but I don't know. I I really feel like he's a genuine person, so I'm I'm really curious what he's you know where Ethereum is gonna be in a year or what's gonna happen. Uh, but what I do agree is that we should abolish daylight savings <laughs> time, <laughs> as we as he says. Don't get me time. wrong. I think I think Ethereum fucking sucks fundamentally in terms of the fact that it is grabbing hold as number go up because we're gonna have this thing that can be you know controlled by governments that's gonna gain network effect and maybe mm-hmm. global utility. That's mm-hmm. horrible. That sucks. Yeah. But Monero will also be one for different use cases, and maybe maybe eventually, uh, you know, layers get built on top of Monero that ends up, you know, where you could do the things that you're doing on Ethereum on Monero, and that you know happens down the road. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah yeah. So there's so many things, but um, yeah. Doug said about you know we talked about basically proof of stake, but if you're still into proof of work and you're into Bitcoin, you can go to Walmart. And I'll give you two options. You can go to Walmart and get yourself a Bitcoin miner. You can get this one for six thousand dollars. Um, it will give you one hundred and four terawatts um, per terahashes. Sorry, terahashes per second. It's a Bitmain and miner S nineteen J Pro. Um, looks pretty big. Um, so you can get that, or what you can do, you can type in AMD. MD9 CPU. 
And ladies and gentlemen, you can buy yourself a CPO and mine Salmonero <laughs> for way cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> you can get yourself a couple CPUs, get yourself a couple GPUs, and you're set to go. Or you can buy the end miner as well, whatever you choose. Um, but I think, <laughs> I think it's interesting that they sell it in Walmart. I think it's interesting. That's yeah, that's that's really interesting. I mean, it's obviously not I can't imagine it's right the most efficient way to get involved in crypto is to buy. Um I mean what yeah, what are the what are the price? Like what are they the value? Is it is it a if you wanted to get into to mining Bitcoin, is there any value there in buying one of these? Is is it already outdated? It's gotta be, obviously, right? It's a good question. I'm not sure how much I, I don't follow Bitcoin like what is the latest and greatest ASIC and I can't imagine. It's got to be like, right? It's got to be like a, a horrible <laughs> buy. There's no way. Yeah. I don't think this is enough, you know, because you also, well, you need to account for they're your. Trying, they're trying to pretend like they're already at the commodity stage and they're just not. Like that may happen in the future where an ASIC essentially is, is as commoditized as a CPU, but there's, there's just no way. Which is funny, which is what the point you're making, right? Like, so Monero's already there. It's called the CPU, people. We, you know, just buy one and you're, you're there. You don't need to buy a special, uh, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Plus, like, this thing makes a lot of noise. <laughs> like, it makes a lot of noise. The CPU, not so much. Like, this sounds like a helicopter. It's really loud. So even, like, say that it is affordable, it's still so loud. Like, it's so much so much better to just get a cpu you know even from that standpoint it just makes more sense so yeah and it has no alternative, alternative use cases either yes which bitcoiners would somehow tell you why that's i i get the, the argument for, I, I don't agree with that argument for why that's even a, a good thing but keep going keep going yeah um but there's positives and negatives within the space itself um like this one, changenow.io. Um, seen a couple. The reason why I'm talking about it is because I've seen more people discuss it. So I thought it, that it is quite important. Essentially, I guess I've never, I haven't tried them. Uh, but that um, whenever say this person sends some Bitcoin to be traded for Monero, and the transaction usually takes less than half an hour, but after a couple of days, he still didn't receive any coins. And he talks about the issues and things like that, and essentially that they're holding customers' funds because they, they can't just send you, if something bad happened, um, you, they can just ask for a refund address and they can give you the coins back, which actually, guys, be careful because I've been tricked sometimes into sending some crypto somewhere and then they had some issues on their end. And the only way that I could get it back is if I KYC'd. And I have to sometimes. <laughs> um, not that they do, but you know, I'm just saying in, in general about... Uh, yeah, so I guess be careful if you're using change now. Look into it, do your research, and just stay wary. Mm. Yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that. Um, we use now payments on gratuitous. We also use the Monero Gateway, and you know, most all people use that. But we use we also have um, now payments, and that lets anybody pay in any crypto, which is kind of cool. It is. It's it's worked out pretty well. Um, so I. I I like their services for that for that aspect, and then it automatically transacts it into Monero and sends it off to us as Monero, so like people can pay in like Doge or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I've I've heard these uh, additional people complaining. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so just be careful. <laughs> be careful out there. Uh, let's talk about this one. Was in wait, let me see. One sec, let's see. Oh, this one is cool as well. You like this one, New York Fed. Oh, let's talk about this one. I want to talk about this one. Let's skip these two for now. Um, New York Fed completes the first phase of tests on the US dollar CBDC. Interesting. So the Federal Reserve Bank of New York has revealed the successful completion of a test that involved the, the use of a central bank digital currency for wholesale cross-border transactions. Yeah, sure. I mean, you might get censored but you know um exchanging a u.s digital dollar with experimental foreign currencies on separate blockchains um and then they just you know give more and more details about that and um it says the recently completed phase one of the experiment explored the potential applications of blockchain technology to enhance the functioning of cross-border payments 
It lasts over 12 weeks and included the development of a wholesale CBDC prototype. It's obviously going this way, <laughs> obviously. Why shouldn't it be? And just like Rishi said, the, the, the current, um, the present prime minister of UK, they'll make you think that you'll have your CBDC in cash, <laughs> but you're not going to eventually. There's only going to be CBDC and they're working on it. So they just want to get rid of cash, as Nightmare said in the, in the comment section. Um, it's happening fast. It's gaining momentum. Really fast. <laughs> really fast. Like some countries already have it implemented, like Nigeria. It failed, but you know, they did it. I was having a good conversation with my my dad today and uh, another gentleman his age, and they were just they were literally reminiscing about the good old days of when cash, what when everybody was using cash, you know, mm -hmm. unrelated, you know, unre I wasn't we weren't talking about Monero, there was and then I was like, guys, I was like, this mm -hmm. is why. I have all my wealth in untraceable digital currency. <laughs> <laughs> they're looking at me and they're like, still like, yeah, but it's not the same. I'm like, no, it, it is the same. We're all, gonna, it's all becoming digital, which is what you guys are complaining about. There uh -huh. is a solution. There is a <laughs> Like, you don't have to like just go down with the ship. So people are, people are really <laughs> awoken to the cash. That's why I focus on that. Like when we go to these Liberty conferences, because mm -hmm. that that's the theme, right? We don't have to talk about like, let's ignoring Monero. Let's all agree that they're killing off cash and they want to put people on CBDCs. So now let's talk about solutions and then we could go through and you can, you know, tell me, you know, and obviously Monero is one of those, one of those options, but that it's a great, that, that is way, and that is a meme that is catching on. Like people are becoming, uh, I think very much aware of the fact that cash no longer exists and they're, mm -hmm. they're concerned. Mm -hmm. Talking about the conference. Um, have you seen, I tagged you Justin Amash, uh, tweeted something about I think privacy or decentralization, something like that. Have you oh, seen that? No, I forget what did he say. I didn't see it. Something like that. Something along those lines. But when I think wasn't he? I think he's running for presidency. No, or, he's a con. He was a congressman. Yeah, he, that, yes. um, he was the flake. He was like the first major elected libertarian. He was a libertarian, I believe. I it could begin. I think that's it, though. He was like a libertarian congressman. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, he such... may he may run on the I don't know on the libertarian ticket as the president. I don't think he's like the, mm -hmm. the front runner for that. I don't think he's in Congress right now. But yeah, he did, sure. but he didn't want to talk about Monero, right? That's what I wanted to say. Exactly, that's what I wanted to say. Right? Tell everybody. Tell everybody what happened. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's kind of it was really funny. Um, so essentially, this guy Justin Amash, um, he tweeted that thing about something about privacy or decentralization in money, something like that. I think that's what it was, decentralization in money, whatever. Yeah. We were at the conference, we saw him, and then we said, oh yeah, let's go talk to that guy. Yeah, I think he's gonna be awesome, yeah. And uh, we went after him, and then for five minutes, it was just a back and forth, well, do you mind if we just ask a couple of questions? Oh, no, 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 I have to talk to the students. I came here for the students. <laughs> we chased, they, like, just we, a couple of questions. We chased oh, him down, because we asked him first, like when he first, we, you know came off stage right we asked him and like he was like uh no, 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 i'm busy and then like the second thing i hit him again but this time i had the microphone out i was like can we just ask you something but yeah he, did, he didn't go for it man he did not i was like we just want to get your opinion on digital cash that's it oh, i gotta talk to this to the students i'm sure the yeah, students would love to hear your opinion on this as well yeah i'm sure yeah i was surprised by that that's I should have just went. I'm a student. I should have just it, went. It shows you their true colors right away. You know, uh -huh. like Ron uh -huh. Paul would definitely, I think, stop to talk about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I was surprised. I, that's yeah, like was... that's an easy convo for a true libertarian to have. Like you have to have an opinion mm -hmm. on real cash and whether or not. And so I guess the only possible thing is he doesn't want to like promote Monero. He wants to just, you know, maybe he's a B mm -hmm. maxi or something. That's maybe, but I mean, he <laughs> could have answered one question, but whatever, guys. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> um, and bankrupt Lebanon locals mine Bitcoin and buy groceries with 
tether as one dollar is now worth 15 cents. Um, once known for its stable and investment-friendly banking system, Lebanon has plunged into chaos as hyperinflation grips the country and banks force huge haircuts on dollar withdrawals. Um, to make ends meet in a financial system that no longer makes sense, some Lebanese are mining Bitcoin or storing wealth using the cryptocurrency. The dollar pegged stablecoin Tether, which users trade for cash, is also popular. And this is because since 2019, uh, Lebanon plunged into a financial crisis following decades of expensive wars and bad spending decisions and a bad, very bad government, by the way. Um, and yeah, they're essentially under hyperinflation. And it's been really horrible, as we've seen in, in previous in the previous shows. We've, show, we've, we've shown videos of um, people breaking into banks just to get their money because they wouldn't give it to them. Um, but yeah, now people find alternatives. They're, they are accepting money in uh, Bitcoin, like freelancers. They're mining Bitcoin. They're you know trying to create their own economy because. The one that they have is so broken that it doesn't even matter. They can just create something new. And um, unfortunately, there's nothing on <laughs> anybody using Monero because they probably don't even know <laughs> that they are um, using it. Um, yeah, but um, it's interesting to see. And I'm happy to see it in a way because they'll find their way eventually, you know. But it's a step forward. Um, but let's move on. I think uh, we have uh, no, we have two more. One is about the White House, which seeks international cooperation to thwart growing ransomware threat. Um, essentially, there's there's obviously a lot of uh, ransomware attacks that that has have been going on for um, well since the internet. Uh, but there's more and more, and uh, they want to tackle that. Plus, um, plus they want to. Why? Well, let me see. They want to tackle cyber criminals. Yes, and then I think they did mention. Yeah, they they mentioned ramping up KYC AML on a global level, like basically tying all the loose ends. They talk about um, tornado cash as an example of you know how they use the you know, the strong arm of, of the U.S. government to to shut it down and to sanction it and how that was a good thing, right? Something that they, they needed to do to help fight uh, ransomware. And so it's, the, it, it's you know, them uh, basically encroaching upon further towards, uh, you know, Monero, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, it will, you know, soon be described as one of these tools that's used so it's, I think, you know, it's important. It's important news. That's a big. That's a big ramp up. It's a global summit. I was watching some of the videos. I mean, they had representatives from all around. You know, from every country essentially that were there, and they were all mm -hmm. like, "Yes, you know, ransomware is bad, obviously, but they're like, they're like putting cryptocurrency on the table as part of the problem, and the fact that they need to make sure that it's essentially it's traceable because if it's not, it could. It's allowing for ransomware. So I think that's. That was a that's a big move, big global move forward uh, in terms of saying, you know, tools that do that can help, uh, you know, something like ransomware are bad. And for example, Tornado Cash was one of them, and that's why we stopped it. Mm -hmm. So big stuff. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, big stuff. So we'll see what the regulations are there. They are going to come up with um, after these meetings. Um, but it's interesting. And then we have uh, just one more quick one. Uh, Canada to examine crypto, stable coins, and CBDCs in new budget. I think it's more about the CBDCs than anything else. Um, Canada's government stated its concerns about the risks digital assets and the digitalization of money may pose to its financial system as a reason for launching the consultation. Um, the Canadian federal government is set to launch a consultation on cryptocurrencies, stablecoins, and CBDCs, as revealed in its new mini budget. So everybody's going to do it um, eventually. Um, the US, Canada, everybody else is going to have CBDCs in the end, which is why 
you might want to get some Monero today and just put it aside and maybe maybe buy more. The more unsafe you, um, uh, you feel over time, which you are going to feel more unsafe given what's happening. So, Dude, it's crazy the amount of uh, central bank digital currency stories. Insane. Yeah, and, one, and this is the last thing that I'll say. Uh, the one lady that we talked to at the conference, she said that CBDCs are not really a threat or they're not coming this soon. <laughs> um, they are. They are coming soon. And some countries even have it. So um, there we go. Tony, but, you, you may have to take one for the team and, and date her in an attempt to convince oh. her. To... <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying? You can win her over. I think we need to we need to uh, open a fundraiser. I'll do it if you guys donate some Monero <laughs> to the cause. <laughs> that would make a great doc, a great a great film. Yeah. Um, Monero Maxi infiltrating it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Sunita, Sunita is on her would be on her deathbed if she was allowed to go to her bed right now. So yeah, we're we gotta done. move on. We gotta move on. Let's close it off. Yep, that was it, guys. Uh, that was it for um, this week. Thank you for coming. As always, we have the links in the description. Um, please like, please share, subscribe if you haven't, and because uh, it matters a lot. And we'll see you next week.